Hi, this is your Uncle Zolly or Stu Silver. I'm your uncle in the mobile home business with your weekly video tip on how to make money in mobile homes so that you can reach your personal and financial goals. I've been investing for 30 years in real estate and I've written three books explaining many of the techniques that I'm giving you right now. Here is this week's tip on how to make money in mobile homes. I'm going to teach you about lease options and let me see if I can do it in 10 minutes or less. First off, there are three different ways to use a lease option. You can use it to buy a property using a lease option and then just hold it for positive cash flow and then when it appreciates or you want to sell it later on you sell it. Or you can do a sandwich lease option which means you buy a property using a lease option and then you turn around and sell the property to somebody else and giving them a lease option and make a profit on the difference between the terms of the lease option which I'll describe later or you can use a lease option to sell a flipper that doesn't flip. Now the advantages of using a lease option are very powerful. First off, a lease option is one of the greatest tools for a starting investor because you need the least amount of cash to get started. Oh, a couple of thousand dollars would do it. There's very light management if you set it up the right way. You want to do a net lease where the tenants who are buying the property from you are responsible for all the repairs and maintenance so that you are selling it to them as is. You can also defer taxes with a lease option by doing a 1031 exchange or by paying a lower rate, a capital gains rate, when it comes time to sell them. And a sandwich lease option is probably the least risky no money down technique there is. And last but not least, it is a great strategy to use on upper income property. In other words, property that is very high priced, but most high priced property does not throw off a lot of income. As a matter of fact, they're negative cash flow. But if you option a very high priced property, you can set it up so that it is positive cash flow until you sell it. Now, it's usually easier to lease and option a property than to sell it for cash. And here's why. It's based upon the principle of the buyer chasing their own money. And when you think about it, if you do an installment purchase on something, for instance, you buy a car um, with a down payment and then finance it, you are chasing your own money, your down payment, because if you don't make the payments, you're going to lose the car. Life insurance is the same way. If you don't make the payments on your life insurance policy, you lose your life insurance policy. Now, the best way to make sure that a lease option gets executed, in other words, the person that you lease an option a property to, to make sure that they buy it, is to give the biggest monthly credit you can and still make money. Because there's definitely a correlation between the amount of credits that somebody earns as they lease option something and whether they go on to close. Now, on a sandwich lease option, you want to set it up with your best advantage to you, which means that you want to buy it with a lower option price than you're selling it, so you make money on the difference between the two. You want to option it long, like two to five years, but sell it short on maybe a year term. You want to give the least amount of option money when you buy on a leased option, say a thousand or a couple of thousand dollars, and then try to get more money when you sell on a lease option like two to five or even ten thousand or more. You try to get the least rent when you buy on a lease option and then you try to get more rent when you sell on a lease option and try to make at least a hundred dollars a month. And also try to get more rental credits when you buy as opposed to what you give away when you sell and try to buy it with the previous owner making all the repairs so that you get it in tip-top shape and then sell it to the new buyer who makes all the repairs before he closes. Now there are some powerful disadvantages of a lease option and you need to be aware of them. The first thing is you need to protect yourself from an unscrupulous owner where he gives you a lease option and then sells it out from under you. So you want to record a memorandum of lease option in the county records. You also want to make sure that a lien doesn't color the title. 
And I saw cases of this where somebody lease optioned a property from a seller and then the seller got a lien placed on him for a million dollars so that the person that he gave an option to would never be able to close on the option because there was a million dollar lien against it that the seller could not clear. So as a result of some of these risks, you want to make sure that you do not spend a lot of your own money on a lease option until you gain title to it, that it's actually in your name or recorded in your name in the county records. Now let me give you a lease option example. There's the property right there and it was actually my neighbor's house and I was mowing my lawn one day and he came over and he said, Stu, and I didn't hear him and he yelled, Stu, waved his hands and finally I heard him and I turned off the lawnmower and I said, yeah, what can I do for you, John? He said, how'd you like to buy my house? And now let me tell you about his house. Uh, if you follow the pointer, this is a mobile home that somebody fixed up very nicely, a two-bedroom, one-bath. And then the previous owner attached a house to it. He literally built another house and attached it to the mobile home. And in that little house was a living room, a bathroom, and a master bedroom. Also in this house was a living, breathing cypress tree. When the gentleman that sold the house to my neighbor was adding on the house to the mobile home, he enclosed a living, breathing cypress tree in the living room. What you see on the picture on the right there is a stump when I cut it down. And I cut that darn thing down because I could never stop it from leaking. He had the tree going through the roof. He literally built the roof around the tree. And then the tree extended 20 feet above the roof. And no matter what I did, I couldn't stop it from leaking during the rain. We put tar on it. We must have put 25 gallons of tar and rubber gaskets. We tried everything under the sun. Couldn't stop it from leaking. So one day I just sent my man over there with a chainsaw. He cut it down to right down to the floor level in the living room. And then we covered over the roof opening we sealed it up so that it would never leak he wanted me to pay him eighty thousand dollars for his house and i said i don't really have that kind of money he said Stu, let me tell you something i've got it all set up for you he said the person that i bought it from gave me a sixty five thousand dollar mortgage a seller mortgage as you call in uh, Australia, vendor financing. He said, you can assume that. And I said, yeah, but there's $15,000 extra, which I don't have right now. He said, that's okay. I'll take that Airstream trailer in your backyard. Now, that Airstream trailer in my backyard has a whole nother story attached to it. I got it for free. I had no title for it and didn't know what to do. Now I know what to do. Then I didn't know what to do with it. So he said, I'll take that Airstream trailer with no title because he was going to move it over to another house that he was buying on Fort Myers Beach. And he was going to live in that Airstream with his family while he was fixing the house in Fort Myers Beach. So he agreed to take the trailer in lieu of a down payment. So I bought his house, assumed a $65,000 mortgage, and gave him an Airstream trailer that I got for free. I then proceeded to find a lease optioner, and I found him very quickly because the property was on five acres and had a huge workshop. And I lease optioned it to him, the buyer, for $110,000, and they wound up closing on the lease option one year later, and I sold it to them for no money down. I took a $10,000 second mortgage and I brought them to a bank and they financed a first with $100,000. So if you look at this deal, I bought the property for no money down, sold it for no money down, and took back a $10,000 mortgage, which they eventually paid off about a year or two later. So I wound up making $45,000 on it. Now, I'm told that I have to give you a call to action. I spoke to an internet guru and he said, Stu, you are not giving your people a call to action and you're doing them a disservice. So now I'm going to give you a call to action and I want you to do something. I would like to turn this video blog into a question and answer blog so that I can answer and help you with problems each week. In order to do that, you need to know what you don't know. 
and I've written three books that I want you to buy. The first book is a real simple one. It's called How to Get a Good Deal on a Mobile Home. I wrote it basically for people that wanted to buy a mobile home and live in it, but didn't know anything about how to get a good deal. And this book will show you how to get a good deal on anything, but I use mobile homes in general, and it's in a PDF format, so when you buy it, it instantly gets sent to you. Then I have my second book, which is right here. Let me move the pointer over right there. There's the second book, Mobile Home Wealth. It is on how to invest in individual mobile homes. It actually will teach you how to invest in property in general, and I use individual mobile homes as the example. It is only $19.95. My last book there, right on the bottom, is Mobile Home Wealth Part 2, and that is 650 pages. By the way, Mobile Home Wealth above it is 450 pages. Mobile Home Wealth Part 2 is how to make money in mobile home parks, which is a distinctly different investment. Now, if you buy the Mobile Home Wealth Part 1 that I call it right here, I will give you how to get a good deal on a mobile home for free. And if you buy Mobile Home Wealth Part 2, I will give you both books above it for free. I'll give you the good deal book and the Mobile Home Wealth Part 1 on how to make money in individual mobile homes. The way to buy them is to go to my website and up along the header there's a tab that says books and kits. Just uh, click on that. I have a secure shopping cart that you can purchase it by using a credit card. Then you can send me your question and we can play stump the uncle. You can stump your uncle Zolly. And I got to tell you something. I love tough questions. I love questions that make me think and help me grow along with you. So that's what I would like to do. I would like to turn this blog into a question and answer video blog where I can help you with problems that you have. Thank you very much. That was this week's lesson on lease options, and I think I did it in less than three days. I'll see you next week. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's strategy on how to make money with mobile homes, and I hope this helps you to reach your personal and financial goals. Remember, you now have an uncle in the mobile home business. And when Zolly is your uncle, I'm your uncle for life. No phone, no pool.